long, uh, again, a lifetime A-plus record with the NRA, worked with them. They came to me repeatedly when I was in the Senate to help them and, 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 and sponsor legislation and work toward uh, making sure and assuring gun rights. Contrast that with Congressman Paul, and one of the most important things that we did in, in, uh, in protecting the Second Amendment, and I uh, provided a leadership role on it, was the Gun Manufacturers Liability Bill. There were a lot of lawyers out there who were trying to sue gun manufacturers and hold them liable for anybody who was harmed as a result of the gun properly functioning. And we, we went forward and passed, with the NRA's backing, a bill that put a, uh, a ban on those types of lawsuits. If that ban had not been passed, if that gun manufacturer's liability bill, removing them from liability from that, had that not been passed, there would have been no gun industry in this country and there would have de facto been no Second Amendment right. Congressman Paul voted against that bill. And, and that's a very big difference between someone who actually works with the gun uh, Second Amendment groups for, for legislation that can protect that right and someone who says they're for Second Amendment has attacked me on my Second Amendment issues, which you just referred to. And here's a man that would have wiped out the Second Amendment by if his vote would have been carried the day. Congressman Paul. Oh, hardly would that wipe out the Second Amendment. But uh, the, the jurisdiction is obviously with the state. Even when tort law is involved with medical malpractice, which is a real problem. Now, our governor uh, worked on, and our state has done a little bit on medical liability. I think that's the way it should be handled. You don't have, you don't have national tort law. That's not part of the process that should be at the state level. So to argue the case that that does away with the Second Amendment, when I'm the one that offers uh, all, all the legislation to repeal the gun bans that have been going on, automatic rifles, everything else. I mean, I've introduced legislation like that. So that's a bit a bit of an overstretch to, to say that uh, I've done away with the Second Amendment. Uh, 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 no, I, I need to respond to that because the fact is if we did not have a national liability bill, then people would have been able to go to states like, say, Massachusetts or New York and sue gun manufacturers where they would not pass a gun liability bill. So unless you have a national standard to protect gun, uh, manufacturers of guns, you would create the opportunity for the elimination of guns being manufactured in this country and de facto elimination of the right to bear arms. Well, this is where, this is where our Constitution disappears. It's nibbled away. So, well, I can give up on this, and therefore I'll give that, and so there eventually there's nothing left. But no, jur uh, tort law should be a state of function. Jerry Speaker Gingrich. A super PAC supporting Governor Romney is running an ad here citing a pro-life group's charge that you voted for a bill in Congress co-sponsored by Nancy Pelosi that supported China's one-child policy. And they say that means you provided government funding for abortion, but you oppose abortion. What's your response to that charge? Well, this is typical of what both Senator Santorum and I have complained about uh, with Governor Romney's super PAC, over which he apparently has no influence, which makes you wonder how much influence he'd have if he were president. Um, well, let me take that particular bill. That bill was introduced by Claudine Schneider, who is a Republican from Rhode Island. It was introduced at a time when Ronald Reagan's Mexico City policy was in force. The Mexico City policy said no U.S. funding will be used to fund any activity that relates to abortion. So it is explicitly a falsehood to suggest that a bill introduced under Mexico City policy would have paid for China's one-child policy. In fact, I have explicitly opposed it. I have a 98.6 percent national right to life voting record in 20 years, and the only vote we disagreed on was welfare reform, which had nothing to do with abortion. So I think it is an absurdity, and it would be nice if Governor Romney would exercise leadership on his former staff and his major donors to take falsehoods off the air. Governor Romney. Speaker Gingrich, I, I already said at our last debate that anything that's false in PAC ads, whether they're supportive of me or supportive of you, should be taken off the air and fixed. I've already said that. Now, I can't call these people and direct them to do that, as you know, because that would violate federal law. Is that correct? Absolutely. All right. So I can't do what you just asked me to do, but I can tell them publicly as I can here, if there's anything that's inaccurate in, the, in any ads that support me, I hope they take it off and don't run it. But if we're talking about super PAC ads that are inaccurate, Mr. Speaker, you have a super PAC ad and I've that, attacks, that attacks me. Now just hold on. Yeah. That attacks me 
Uh, it's, it's, it's probably the biggest hoax since Bigfoot. Uh, the people who've looked at it have, have said that this ad is entirely false, that, that the, 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 uh, this documentary that they're running includes businesses I had no involvement with the, uh, the uh, events that they described, and, and yet that's out there on a super PAC that, that is supporting you. You've said that you think it's bad, just as I've said, the super PAC that import, uh, supports me is doing bad things, but somehow for you to suggest that you and I have different standards here is just not quite right. I've, said publicly, I've said publicly, I've said publicly it ought to be edited. I've said publicly it ought to be edited, and I believe, in fact, the head of that group has actually submitted to your campaign a set of questions to make sure that they edit it accurately and put only the correct facts in. So I, th I think it should be edited, and I would be delighted if you would agree that the ad that was just referred to is false, and people who see the Romney ad attacking me, or the Romney Super PAC ad attacking me on that particular issue, should know in advance it's false and shouldn't be run. Yeah. Me too. Tell yeah. Governor Perry. We all, we, all would like, we all would like to have super PACs disappear, to tell you the truth. Wouldn't it be nice if people could give what they'd like to to campaigns, and campaigns could run their own ads and take responsibility for them? But you know what? This campaign isn't about ads, it's about issues. So, Governor Romney, in a general election, if you're the nominee, you'd like to see super PACs ended? Oh, I, I would like to get rid of the campaign finance laws that were put in place. McCain, McCain Feingold is a disaster. Get rid of it. Let people make contributions they want to make to campaigns. Let campaigns then take responsibility for their own words and not have this strange situation where we have people out there who support us, who run ads we don't like. We'd like to take off the air. We think they're outrageous, and yet they're out there supporting us, and by law, we're not allowed to talk to them. I haven't spoken with any of the people that are uh, involved with my super PAC in months. And, and this, this is outrageous. People, can't, candidates should have the responsibility and the right to, to manage the ads that are being run in their behalf. I think this has to change. Kelly Evans. Governor Perry, you advocate placing more troops and bigger walls along the nation's southern border to stop illegal immigration. But border crossings are at a four-year low, 40-year low, Illegal immigration overall is down substantially, and the U.S. has other pressing infrastructure and defense needs. Governor, wouldn't we be better off not spending any more money on border patrols and walls? Let me tell you, the reason that uh, those uh, crossings are at 40-year lows is because the economy of the United States is probably at a 40-year low. And the President of the United States needs to change. That's the reason. As the governor of the second largest state and the state with the longest border, I've spent 11 years dealing with this issue. And the idea that Americans don't want us to spend the money to secure that border is just flat out false. We're going to secure the border with Mexico. That means strategic fencing, that means thousands of National Guard troops on the border until we can train up those Border Patrol to be there. And it means predator drones and other aviation assets so that we have the real-time information to flow down to those individuals that are in law enforcement so they can immediately respond to any activities that they see on the border that is either weapons related or drug related or illegal immigration that's occurring on that border. Americans want that border secure. The issue isn't about how much is it going to cost. The issue is when are you going to get it done. And when I'm the President of the United States, that border will be locked down and it will be secure by one year from the time I take my hand off the Bible. Last Twitter question is from an eighth grade teacher in Hobart, Indiana. Uh, and it's for you, Speaker Gingrich. At Mr. Whiteman, has no child left behind been a success or a failure? If latter, what needs to be done to change it? I think it's clearly a failure. I think it has led teachers to be forced into a bureaucratic system of teaching to the test. I find virtually no teacher who likes it. Uh, it is grossly disproportionate. You end up with first-generation immigrants who don't speak very good English being tested against a national standard, and a perfectly good school looks bad, even though it's doing a great job, because there's no measurement that's reasonable. The correct answer is to radically reduce the Department of Education, cut out all federal regulations, return the money and the power back home to the states. But I would say to the states, it would be good for them to shrink their departments of education and return the power back to the local county boards and then let parents and teachers and students get back to learning. Thank you all.
very much. That is the end of our debate, a fiery debate. We appreciate it. That's it for our debate tonight. Our thanks to the candidates, their staffs, the South Carolina Republican Party, and the great people here in Myrtle Beach. Fantastic crowd. Of course, the state of South Carolina as well. They could not have been more hospitable. Stay with Fox News Channel, America's election headquarters, all the way through to the conventions, the general election, and the inauguration in 2013. Post-debate analysis is on the way. Keep it here.